All right. So this is uh, Derek. He helped me find our uh, property that we just walked today. And uh, we're going to talk about probably the top three things um, that are important when looking for a, a rec property or vacant land. So uh, what do you think is the most important uh, piece of or thing when you're looking for a piece of property? Uh, well, to me, I think right off the hop, water. Water's quite important. I don't think if you have, if you don't have water, you don't have a heck of a lot. Uh, there's always options. You can drill wells, uh, but there's a lot, of, there's risk involved with wells because you don't know how deep it's going to be. You don't know the expense and, and you don't know the quality really. Yeah. I think the water quality is the big one. Even if you do find uh, water that specifically if it's coming from a well, you don't know if it's going to be uh, drinking quality or um, what you're going to get in the hole can be quite expensive. Uh, what uh, What's another thing that we'd be looking for? Well, after water, um, probably just um, can you access the property? How are you going to access the property? You know, I think the realities of having to sled in or boat into your property every time you want to go to the grocery store is very different than the reality of going to the grocery store in, in a snowstorm and getting stuck in the ditch halfway. And yeah, <laughs> it's just, uh, just be prepared for the, the realities of, of what a recreation property is. I think that's a good point. A lot of people have this fantasy about this mountain property they're going to sled into, but when you have to do that every time and you're trying to bring stuff up it can get old pretty quick, I would think. And yeah. having vehicle access is definitely helpful, especially when you're setting it up. Oh, so it's, it makes it so much more affordable for, for starters. And mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, practical. another, uh, point too, just with the access, I do know if a piece of property does not have access or, reasonable access the bank will not finance it as well Gonna or have a hard time getting be, a loan. yeah be very difficult um and then uh what would be a third uh, tip you'd have for people that are looking to buy um vacant land or uh wreck property yeah uh well it's, it's the same as uh, most property like verify the zoning make sure you can do what you want to do with the chunk of land you're buying yeah and i think that's uh, a good point especially when you're talking about if maybe you get a piece of property and you want to have some animals on it maybe it's a horse or a couple of cows can you actually have them there based on the zoning yeah or is like is that considered like oh that's going to be too stinky for the neighbors we don't want that there so yeah i mean zoning is a very common one that you want to you want to know well and uh Probably too, um, if you plan on putting a couple cabins up or outbuildings, can you actually build them mm -hmm. the way you want to, or is there very specific requirements that, uh, yeah, and a lot of people are looking to subdivide land too, and, and there'll be minimum lot sizes may or may not be right. Depending on what yeah. it is. Like. Yeah. Zoning is a good one. I think a lot of people forget about that. They buy the quote, perfect piece of land and then they can't do what they want to do on it because the zoning doesn't allow for it. So. Yeah, and if you hire, if you're, if you go through professional real estate, your realtor should know and will verify that for you. Uh, and but you know, buyer beware if you're not if you're self represented and, and you end up stuck with a piece of property that you can't do anything with. Like it's kind of like you own that. Yeah. All right. So uh, as you notice, Derek's standing way over there. It's still COVID, so we're staying separate we had to uh, come out in two different vehicles because of all the restrictions and stuff but uh yeah. that's okay hopefully this ends soon but uh, anyways uh if you guys are looking for uh property in southern bc specifically reach out to derek he's land specialist and he also does a lot of um residential properties as well and he'll help you out he definitely knows land and he's a mountain man by trade and he can definitely help you find what you're looking for. So make sure to reach out to him. And I just wanted to thank you, Derek, for helping us find this place. Uh, this Heritage Cabin was definitely a bonus. It doesn't look like much now, but, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. We can maybe take the roof off and uh, take the logs up and 
do something with it. Too, Your project so. here is going to be awesome. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off, but no. I'm just really looking forward to seeing what you can yeah. get done up here. It's going to be amazing. I think that the old homestead is really suited to, to kind of perpetuating your vision for, you know, yeah. security and family, family just inheritance. Yeah. And that, the, the one thing I really liked with um, this homestead site too was, and you'd mentioned it before, was when um, the homesteaders did things, everything was the hard way. So they picked the best spots. Yeah. So we've walked this entire property today, pretty much every, I don't want to say every square inch, but we've walked the whole Went thing right around it and through it a couple yeah. times and check the whole thing out and i think at the end of the day i think where the cabin sitting right now is probably the best spot that mm -hmm. we found there's lots of good spots um the cabin's right close to the water though i think and... it's proximity to water that's the easy part here yeah. otherwise you're got to figure out how to get it up to where you want to be yeah and there's several other flat benches that would work there's as some beauties with views and everything yeah so um, I guess in my mind, down the road, um, if the kids inherit this, there's three of them. There's at easily three other sites where they could put their own cabins up if they wanted and just have a place to come out here. And and um, this was kind of a little diamond in the rough, the rough I guess. The previous owner had uh, bought it to log it, and fortunately he was pretty conscientious and just took the trees that he could actually use and uh left the rest so we have a lot of trees that were taken but he did a really good job of cleaning up the property and leaving all the uh trees that are maybe 30 feet tall and 20 years old but um they're no value to him but they're tons of value to us so well yeah you got your wildlife zones like you're gonna like that's gonna just be so good for the wildlife and the bird watching and then you got 30 years of growth already on your woodlot for the next generation which yeah is nice and uh the one nice thing too um i think we've mentioned it before when they clear the property for logging you can actually see the contours of the land and check everything out so we were really able to figure out where were the actual best building sites and um it's very difficult to do that if all the trees are there so this is kind of like a good opportunity to check that out and see what we're really working with for um, this program for for what you want to do with this land it's ideal yeah. to have it freshly logged because <clears throat> you, you it's like yeah you're ready to put your fence line in like you don't have to cut down regen that's 20 years old it's yeah. like it's just the it's clean the expensive work was done exactly and, um, and they, they got paid for doing it which is nice yeah <laughs> and i think uh, that's a probably my own tip too is um, I know lots of guys that buy bush quarters because they're super cheap, but then they spend a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of cat work just to clear it. Whereas if you buy something that's actually forested and you want it cleared, often you'll get paid um, somewhat for the logs that they pull off. So that can actually help pay for part of the property as well if it's the uh, right species of trees and they're um, merchantable timber. But uh, yeah, you want to get them timber bruised. And or at least understand yeah. values yourself when you're going and looking at merchantable timber and then understand how the whole process works, how do you get it out. Yeah. So that's uh, probably the, one of the biggest things I learned is um, if uh, you can get someone else to do the work and it pays for itself, that saves you time, money, effort, the whole nine yards. So this is actually a really good way to go for us, I think. I don't own any big equipment right now. No. And, but this is the route he's made a canvas for you and it's it's yeah. quite a canvas this piece is spectacular yeah I mean, we've been looking for what four months now yeah I think we found two really kind of special ones and, yeah yeah and they both had offers on them but this one yeah. fell through and we jumped on it last minute and, and yeah. it worked out yeah this this property literally last night the offer fell through they accepted our offer and I sent all the stuff to the bank last night and then 10, a, right? at 10 or 11 and literally came out two hours later started driving and started driving because I was like I got to see what we just bought sight unseen I think it's good <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh more than I hoped for anyways it's got so many neat little um crevices in the land and little oh, features and the area is beautiful I mean, 
it's there's so much cool like the undu yeah. undulation is going to be awesome yeah and for hunting uh, and just microclimates on the plant on yeah. like if you want to use this as a as a what my my passion and idea about it is uh what is that um permaculture you know and, and as you sit on the land and if you see the shady zones like you're going to be like i'm going to grow my fungus here this is where my animals are going to be because it just the land is is ready for it like the, the land tells you kind of what it wants to do and where it wants to do it exactly so. and it takes time to to sit and watch it and, and i yeah. think that like we over value money and undervalue time yeah we spend all our time chasing money when it's like we're spending our time like when you spend your time on the land it's it's yeah. fulfilling and it's kind of like it gives back more than than the, the whole cold hard cash yeah it seems like pretty cool place like when we were coming up the just to the south of us is where the road starts basically in the bottom of the valley and comes up the mountain and the whole way up it's like super dry super arid um i think that like scattered pine i think they were pine anyway yeah there's a lot of pine um and then you just come around back to this spot and it's just like you're in a completely different area the trees are um more um like douglas fir you got aspen you got poplar you got spruce pine. yeah you got the there's trees that like water yeah the here. trees that like water are here and i yeah. It almost seems like there's a spring. There has to be underneath um, that big aspen or that yeah. pot, cottonwood grove there. Yeah. I'm sure that's got to be something like be a that. a spring there. And there's a pond that holds water. We could probably dam that up a little bit and make it hold more water. But yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of got everything we were looking for anyway to get started. And, and I think first project is, I know the wife's going to want to do a, the fence or at least get the boundaries established and whatnot but uh so maybe i'll get that surveyed properly just so we know exactly where the fence line would be mm -hmm. but Will i be <laughs> i kind of want to uh work on this cabin oh gosh yeah it's exciting or or a cabin um yeah. something to to get started with anyway but yeah anyways i think that's it for this one thanks derek again thank and, you chris it's been a lot of fun yeah no it has been it's been uh I met Derek uh, several years ago, actually in Northern BC on a hunting trip and he was my guide. Yeah. And chasing that was, sheep. yeah, chasing sheep and that was tons of fun. And, uh, yeah. And we've kept in contact ever since. And once he got out of the mountains, he became realtor. So I was like, Hey, I'm going to use this guy I already know. And this yeah, is it was sweet when I got your phone call. Uh, I was, yeah, I was kind of chipping away at my real estate license when I was guiding already, but, you know, families dictate a change of direction sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You can't, sure. you can't run away to the mountains for all three months of the year. No, yeah. He was expect to still have a family at the yeah. end of it. You got to live the dream long enough, I guess. Yeah, 17 so. years was a nice run for sure. Yeah, so anyways, uh, I guess that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching and uh, make sure to comment below and look Derek up if you're looking for some property. He'll definitely help you out.